Tom, did you have some more music-based questions for Gary? I wanted, I wanted to ask you if you had like any real guilty pleasures, actually. So maybe, um, maybe for this pop music will come out now. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, but like, not none of it. You know, the, the whole guilty pleasures thing. It's like it's it's tr- it's only a guilty pleasure if you're bothered about sounding cool, and I've never been bothered about being cool. It's like, yeah, I, I, I I've always had a big '80s pop. I love '80s pop, you know, like, and 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 then. My, actually, one of my favorite records of all time is is a, a Bee Gees record from 1993 called Sizes and Everything. And it's kind of like the Bee Gees in their uh, sort of, it's called their New Jack Swing phase. It's really kind of naff, but man, that record was so influential on me and Rai. We used to like, yeah. we used to put it on in uh, our bedroom at my mom and dad's house when we were like 12 years old. And I, I can still sing every lyric of that record. And it's like, we used to like be like, you know, uh, d- proper nerds, really. Like, my mom and dad were been worried about me. Like, man, 12 years <laughs> old, why are they listening to this, like, adult <laughs> contemporary and, like, singing along in the bedroom? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but I, I, I like that. I, I, might, I, might, I might go listen to it, actually. I'll, oh, it's, I'm it's, gonna, it's I'm an awesome listen to it tomorrow. record. It's awesome. Yeah, I've, I've, I've it, never it, listened to it. You'll probably hear a lot of where we got yeah. a lot of our ideas from, like a lot of our melodies are very influenced by it. With you know, like yeah. subliminally, just like kind of like osmosis. It just it, it's right. it's still like what I hold as being the standard for like good pop melodies. Just going to say about those eighty songs. Um, you often use them as your walk-on song as well, don't you? Yeah, it's just a good feeling, you know. It's like it makes people feel good. Remember, like when we first, we were, it was during the New Fellas tour, and we first started doing like really big gigs, and like people would be like, oh, you need to have, like, change on other music and walk on music and stuff. So we went out to... Oh, uh, didn't, the... didn't you... Was it Lady in Red or something? It, well, that came later, but we went we went out to the HMB Megastar or something in, in London before we played at, uh, what was it, like, Astoria or something like that. And, like, we were told, we need, you know, you should get some change over music and... So we went and we got this, uh, it was a school reunion double box, uh, double CD box set of like 80s songs. And we just stuck that on all night. And it was really cool because like put the mirror balls on and like these kind of nostalgic 80s songs. And people were just, by the time we went on stage, people were just in a really good mood. And we were like, oh, that, that was cool. You know, we'll just it's nice to just create a good atmosphere at the gigs. And I think, mm. you know, if, it, if it's kind of cheesy or naff music that's not cool, it just it that just feels good, you know. It's like better than just trying to be like, hey, listen to look at how hip we are. We're gonna yeah. play like, you know, ninety minutes of ambient noise before we play. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I, I I can I can respect that, but it's like, I just I just like to we just like to create a good atmosphere, you know. We just want it's just nice, you know. It just makes people feel good, and um, but yeah, like a lot of those like. We we always we, we we wanted to be like a, a a weirder band than what we are, but like a lot of those like like especially that Bee Gees record, it just became the template for like how to write melodies as far as we were concerned. Like that's why we've always loved like cheesy what us and like oohs and ahs. Like we're just we're the biggest suckers for that kind of thing, and mm. because it just sound it just sounds good, you know. Just to, to me, it just sounds good. Yeah, that's 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 one one of the things I do love about you guys is that oh, it, 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 you you are quite poppy in some ways. Yeah, like, with, with with those hooks and stuff, you know. I, love I think. That. Uh, cheers, Tom. I mean, we always we just can't get away from it. It's just like that's just what to me. Like, uh, you know, that was always the main thing. Like, the, just the melody has to be really good, and then, um, but then. You know, we never, but then we recorded really low fire. We recorded really noisy or messy. And, uh, you know, we were always kind of self saboteurs. We st- you know, still are. You know, it's like you just, you, it, it, some of our songs, maybe if we, if they'd have been recorded really poppy and like, and, and whatnot, they, they would, they would maybe be like too saccharine or something. So we would just always like make them really dirty and mess them up. So, it was that juxtaposition that's kind of that's kind of what our sound is, I suppose. Really, 
I was going to talk more about songs. I don't know how personal you want to go, but I was going to ask you if you and Rye have ever like written about each other. Or is there any like <laughs> there any songs? Uh, this is this is just me being a bit of a fan, to be honest. Now, yeah. <laughs> well, not not really, not not really about each other. At least I don't think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, like maybe. But, <laughs> yeah, at least I don't think that we don't. Me, me and I don't talk about what the songs are about. I usually have a pretty good idea about what his songs are about because, I, you know, I know what I know what his state of mind is and I know what he's living through and 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 vice yeah, right. versa. So we usually have a pretty good idea. We never talk about it explicitly, and Ross right. never asks either because it's just like I think we always kind of know, but. Like if I think if we asked about it, like there's always the fear that like it would make the person a little bit more guarded when it came to writing lyrics the next time. Um, mm. So like we have the advantage of knowing what each other are, are getting at without, you know, making people feel awkward about talking about it. Because when like we, I mean, on the new fellas, we were definitely more upfront about our feelings because we were just pretty frustrated and kicking kicking out against stuff on the second record. But yeah. then. From that from that point on, we've sort of become more, you know, it's more personal and cryptic, really. I suppose so. Um, but yeah, I, I can't think of any. I can't think of any examples, really, Tom. To be honest. What What about um, deciding who sings? What do you always sing your own songs? It's whoever like, comes up with you, the melody. What? Yeah, it's whoever yeah. comes up with the melody because it's like they they take ownership of it at that point. Like, you know, it's like right. if you're writing the music and then somebody sings a good melody, it's like, it's it, it, it's on them to sort of finish it. I mean, occasionally we give songs to each other, like um, like the, the song on the third it, what, record. So Shoot one the of Poets. Them, what, my, okay. Uh, I, I wrote the melody, uh, no, I wrote most of that song, like, you know, or at least the bones of it, and then, but then Rai was just like, you know, took over and did all the vocals and, and lyrics, and it, and it was better for him to do that. And there's a couple of other songs where we've done that kind of thing, or where we've written melodies for each other to do. But yeah, where but, it's just a bit more suited for because you've got yeah. like a little bit. You've obviously your vocals are a bit different, and but then there's other suit, situations yeah. like like on men's scenes, women's scenes, whatever. There's a song, um, our bovine public actually, the first song on the record. So like. My backing vocals in the chorus, I'm just singing these autos, but that was my melody for the song. I thought that should be the melody for the chorus, but Ry came up with a better one and he had the lyrics. So I just sing my melody as autos in the background. So occasionally we sort of compete uh. for we compete for who gets the melody. Um, but I like it when we sort of trade off as well. Like, you know, if like one person sings a verse and the other person sings the chorus. I like that too, because it's like you know, one person might, it's, again, it's like a competition. If I write a better verse melody than Ryan, then I get to sing the verse. Or if he writes a better chorus melody than me, then he gets to sing the chorus, you know? So it's like, yeah, it means that like, it, it, that's a good thing about having, you know, somebody that you work with that you, you have that relationship with because there's never any kind of like arguing about it. It's just like, we can usually decide pretty pragmatically on, on who's is, who's is the best and like which one we should pursue you know what i mean so it's always been yeah, pretty right. pretty easy like that yeah, yeah do you find that as brothers you can be honest with each other in that respect yeah i think so i mean you're definitely not you just we're not egotistical people to be honest and so we don't really argue about about things like that between us but it, you know, there's that whole cliche about brothers in bands arguing. Like you do, argue, we we argue about little things, but you never argue about the big things. So like the the music is, and the melodies and the lyrics are always pretty easy because, you know, you just sort of rooting for each other really. But um, but I, I I can't really think of any examples of songs we've argued over, unless there's only only occasionally like when when you have a song where you. Sometimes we we write and record songs all on our own, and like then you just really want the other people to do exactly what you did on the demo. That causes arguing, but when when we write together, it's 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 way more diplomatic. So it's pretty easy. It, it, I, I couldn't imagine. I just I, I couldn't imagine being in a band with anyone other than my two brothers. It's like 
I would find it, re- I think I would find it difficult. I've been lucky that the only real reality that I've known is just being with people that you trust and, and that you, you know, if he does, if, if they come up with something better than my idea, then I'm happy for them to do it because I, I'm, I'm rooting for them. It's not like I'm working against them. So it's, it's made my, you know, I've never known anything else, but I've always found it easy. Have you ever, like, apart from the Johnny Marr thing, obviously, because when he was in the band for a bit, but have you ever, like, um, collaborated with anyone else and, like, any other bands on songs, like, more recently? No, not really. We'd, yeah, I mean, obviously, Johnny was in the band for, um, you know, like, a, what was it, like, two years or something? And that, that was, you know, that was pretty harmonious as well, I think, because... Um, because obviously we we looked up to him and uh, mm. and and he and, and at the same time he was respectful of the fact that he was in a band of brothers as well. So like you know he we had a good relationship. We actually just I just spoke to him on the phone the other day actually just because of this whole pandemic thing. I just you know been checking been checking in with people more and it's it's nice to catch up. It's like. It's funny. It's like when you've had a relationship like that with somebody, you, you'll know it as well, Tom. Like when you've been in a band with somebody for a long time, it's like you just have such a yeah. weird relationship. Almost like a, it's kind of like a cross between like a, a family member and, and, and an ex girlfriend or something. It's like yeah, you have yeah. like all these. It's uh, it's uh, really a, an unusual and special I relationship. Used to, I always used to say that about being in a band with with the boys because it was like. I used to say it, it was like having five girlfriends. <laughs> and I know exactly what you mean. It was just like, you just treat them yeah, differently it, to everybody else. So it was, it was nice to check in and just, you know, uh, talk about stuff. But like that, that was a pretty easy relationship as well for the most part. But then the only other thing we did was, you know, we did the, we did the song with Lee Ronaldo. We did Be Safe. That was, which was oh, yeah. a one-off collaboration. So that was like, just you know, in the heat of the moment, kind of thing. Like we just we had one day in the studio together and just pulled it together, and that, so that was really intense, but really really cool. And then you know, um, we worked with you know Alex, obviously Alex Capranos when he produced the third record. We had you know you yeah. have that sort of same sort of creative relationship as what with the, with with him as what we would have had with like band members too. It's been re- mm-hmm. you know I, I like I like working with people. It's just you know, um, well, and then Rick Akasek too, actually, it was the same thing. It's like when, when, that's why we always work with musicians rather than producers, because it's like, it's just nice to have like a, musicians have just a different rapport, you know, you, you sort of feel like you're working together as opposed to like the producer artist dynamic, which is usually a little bit more sort of adult or something. But when you're working with a musician, you just kind of have a laugh really. And just like, you all know exactly yeah. What, where each other's coming from in a lot of ways. I, I was really enjoying listening to your stories of working with Owen Morris. It sounded, it's, it's just a classic story, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it, uh, it, it was that, it was quite, um, quite. It just sounds like something out of a book or album, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and do you know what? We, um, we did, we had a chat with Kyle from The View the other night and they, they worked with Owen Morris as well. So, Tune in and listen to his um, his stories about him as well because he's got they're quite similar stories really. The thing is though, Tom, like with with regards to like what you were talking about, I can only speak to that. But like with regards to that, I mean, it's funny because people would say, "Oh, well, that's you know, you know, kind of crazy or reckless or whatever." But but for the sort of band that you were and for the sort of record you were wanting to make, it's it's kind of appropriate to like work at night and like, you know, um, and party a little bit. And because it's like when you were playing gigs, you're playing gigs at night and you'd been partying during the day. And it's like, if you're trying to capture that energy that you had, it's like, it makes sense to do that. And, And a lot of people forget that they're just like, take a, take a punk band like you guys were and put them in the studio with like a, you know, father figure who's going to be really serious and take them in hand and like, you know, show them yeah. the ropes and, the, and you're going to record in some fancy studio and like work, you know, from 10 in the morning until eight o'clock at night and you're going to be take it really serious. And it's like, it loses yeah. something. And, and yeah, production, people, people forget that production is about more than just like recording somebody. It's about, it's yeah. about getting, getting them to be 
who they are, getting the personality on record. And like, that's, that's the cool thing. Like that, that record of yours, it's like, you know, it sounds like, it sounds like you guys, it's like, it, it's what it is, what it was supposed to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Even though it, like, you know, it's, it's almost a bit of a cliche, but like before we went in, we obviously, he, he knew what we wanted to get out of the album and he was that kind of producer as well. It, it, that was how he liked to work. So, yeah, um, it, it made, it made, yeah, like you said, it made, it made so much sense. In my in my mind, like good good production, good production is not like whether it sounds sonically clear as a bell or whatever. Like to me, good production is like it it sounds like that that band's supposed to sound. You know what I mean? It sounds like mm. how it sounds like it gives people the experience they would they would get from like seeing them live or 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 just the 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 vibe the, the vibe of like what they're about is 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 in there somewhere and like that but that's not you know that that's a product of your environment as opposed to like what microphones you use or or whatever you know what i mean so yeah it's it's important i listen to the new fellas now and like the, the circumstances we recorded that recording was so crazy like but it reminds me i mean it it, it might just be my own association but like i listen to it and it and, and it sounds like it sounds like that that those nights to me for some reason it's like a, you know yeah. it, it sound it, it's it's like ingrained into it you know that what i was mm. living through and what i was doing and 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 you know the the lifestyle and the and the the, the whole it, scene is sort of somehow like like influences the sound of the record yeah you can almost like you can almost smell it when you listen to shit. Like right, that. it's it's <laughs> true. Yeah, it's it's true, and that's kind of what I was getting at. Like the, like this, it kind of like the smell of dry ice in a in a club night, or like the or the disinfectant of venues when you walk in <laughs> yeah. and just been clean in the night before. It's like <laughs> it reminds. It takes me back, you know. Did Did you record that in London? Yeah, we did, and that did, that's yeah. what was so crazy about it. Like. We went down, like, which is how, like, wanted us to just get straight back in the studio, and we did it over three sessions. And it was one of the situations where they just record, like, we were going in, we did three sessions because they wanted us to record everything that we had at that time, and we didn't have anything. So it's like, you go in and do three tracks at a time, you know, just because, like, you'd managed to pull something together. And, um, you know, it was, a, the music could be, like, sort of written really uh either in our practice room or during sound sound checks or whatever and the lyrics were pretty much just written in the studio and we'd just write about what we were doing because when we were down in london like we were you know we were right in the center of like that crazy scene and like we were brought down to london to record and like we were just kind of we were out all night every night and we'd get to the studio mm. late the next day and just record during there so we were just singing about what we'd been you know the sort of weird adventures that we'd been on, and like the yeah. That's what that's why that that record's just about. In a lot of ways, it's just about the music industry, and it's about like, and it's about the 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 scene at the time, and it's about the the, the people and the experiences. It's 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 really yeah, like, it's just that's all it's about, really, because that's all we were living. You know, it's all we had to write about. So we didn't yeah, really so have time guess, to guess, think about anything I, else. Yeah, and like. So that definitely makes sense that you recorded it in London as well because it had so much significance to it. Yeah. Like no, we'd, we'd finish we'd finish playing during the day and then we'd just like get, you'd get text messages and you'd just end up going out and getting on the tube and going off somewhere. And then, you know, uh, there'd always be a gig or there'd be some, like a party or something like that. And we didn't really know people that much, but like it was, there was such, it was such a, such a vibrant, community at the time that like most of our time in london was spent uh yeah just living in that world and then we've got to the studio for like eight hours a day or something and just you know just put down on just record the songs and lyrically we just sing about what had been going on really it was it was really a lot of it was pretty off the cuff to be honest um just to touch on new music gary it sounds like you're all spread out these days um yeah so how does that work well you know we've been spread out for a while because i came out here to portland in 2006 and so like 
that was before we put out Men's Needs, Women's Needs, whatever. So like, we've, you know, there's been a few records since then. Um, and it, so it's, it's been working fine. Uh, sometimes we do, like, I've got, I've got a studio in my basement, so I sometimes do demos here. Um, but most of the time we just get together in Wakefield and write like we always did. But we, we sort of bring ideas in from our own demos. But um, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't make that much difference. Like, the, you know, uh, I, I sometimes wonder if, if we'd have all lived together in Wakefield still, would we have made more records? Like maybe we would have done, maybe we would have been making a record a year, but would that have been a good thing? Or would it have burnt us out quicker? Or would we have been, or would, or would it have been a better thing? It's, it's hard to know, but I mean, all I can say is like, we, you know, we've managed to sustain stuff like pretty well in the way we've been doing it. So, you know, um, it, it's not it's not a problem. We live different lives now, you know. My life out here in Portland's pretty different to Rise life in New York, which is pretty different to Ross's life in Wakefield. So, you know, we're less of a single minded sort of unit like we used to be. But I think ultimately it's probably been better for us because we don't get burnt out and and we have different we bring different influences in. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but it's been fine. I mean. And if the records had suffered or if, like, the band's popularity had suffered, it would have been a different kettle of fish. But we've been, we've been lucky that, like, you know, that things have, things have been pretty consistent. So, you know, yeah. can't complain, really. Yeah, how has it been in lockdown? Have you noticed any change in, like, do you find you more creative in, in terms of songwriting no, during lockdown or anything like that? No, I, it's been mentally tough. Me, like, I, I just I sort of swing between like being okay and then like sort of being uh, being depressed. But like, um, at first, I was like, oh, I should just I should just use this opportunity to like you know work on music, but I just really didn't feel like it. Like, I, and we've been away for like we haven't played a show for like 18 months at least at this point, and you know we we because we've been going through some stuff anyway so like and we we've we we've, we've sort of had to take the last year and a half off um i was sort of struggling to get back on like you know just just get my enthusiasm back because of the because of the lockdown really like i, I was like i was thinking that i should just really work on on some music but it, it didn't feel like it but so i've actually you know um sort of back into it now so uh you know it's, it's it's helping me to, to copy things a little bit. I don't, I don't, how, how are you guys dealing with it? I mean, it, it's just kind of, I think it's hard. Uh, the, the, locking down is not hard, but it's hard because you feel like you don't really know what you're doing it for a lot of the time. Like you don't, yeah. every day you get up and it's Groundhog Day and then the, the news, yeah. you don't feel like people, are, you don't feel like it's being handled correctly or something. It's like, yeah, so it's just like locking sure. down for no reason. It's, it's Mentally, that's 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 the thing that I struggle with. It kind of feels like I don't know if we're even getting told the truth either. Do you know what I mean, yeah, um, that, that conflicting element of it—it's just it makes it hard. But you mm. know, I can't look. I'm not complaining. Everyone's in the same boat. But um, yeah, it has. I don't know. It 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 hasn't been good for creativity. To be perfectly honest, it's been like. Um, I, but I, I've, I've started to feel like a bit of a breakthrough just recently. I just didn't feel like it for a while. Well, I was pretty disillusioned for a, a while as well. Um, uh, like I said, I took the UK to start some business stuff out at the start of this year, and it's like that, that had been like some ongoing stuff. Like we sort of like not to put too fine a point on it, but we've, we've sort of been forced to take time out, like for various reasons, and. Um, you know, we we put twenty four seven Rockstar shit out in twenty seventeen, and it had done it had done well. It had, it had gone into the top ten, and we were really psyched about that. And we, we wanted to follow it up like immediately with another record, immediately, like as in twenty eighteen, have a new record out. But um, just some unforeseen circumstances, and some stuff that needed just needed dealing with, and it was like. It, we ended up we, we had to go away for a while, you know. And um so then then this this coming on this pandemic, it's like this is like a fast hiatus really, um, which you know, 
it's starting to be like ages since we played. Yeah, I was going to say, was you getting ready to like plan on like do playing we've, again? Or? Yeah, we are, we've we've had we've had. Um, it's it's hard to like it's hard to explain without going into detail, which I can't really do. But it was like, yeah, of course. We right. just had we've had no we we've we've had no choice. We had to we've had to um, we had to take twenty nineteen off, like like wholesale, like there's no, nothing we could do. And uh, twenty twenty started with us going to the UK to sort of, sort some stuff out. And then as soon as we got back, the pandemic started. So it's like, um, so I haven't really had a chance to figure out anything. Um, but it's, yeah, it's been a weird, it's just been a weird couple of years. Like one of the, one of the strangest couple of years of my life, to be honest. And I, I, like certainly one of the most uh, challenging, like, um, yeah, just, I don't know, um, sort of, Sort of losing touch with, uh, sort of losing touch with, you know, uh, context at times. But mm. and then then something like it's completely insane like this happens and you just like whoa, whoa like it just you realize you just not there's not nothing you can do and you just have to like just sitting at home's fine I guess but yeah, uh, it's just weird though isn't it it's just like yeah what? we're not allowed to do. Anything. Yeah, and like I said, I'd already had like this enforced, like mandatory time off that I couldn't, could for you know because of circumstance, I couldn't do anything, and that was like that was mentally tough. And like now I'm again, this is like a, there's another mandatory enforcement of not doing anything, so it's like mm. starting to feel like a bit of a bum, to be honest. Well, hopefully we'll get out of it soon. No, this is kind of a highlight for me, you know, to get to like have a have a chat with you guys and like, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice we... to like to discuss stuff. Yeah, it's, I've, I've enjoyed doing this. Yeah, cheers um... for listening, Gary. Appreciate it. Oh no, it's been, it's been cool, honestly, man. Like, it started with the Black Wire one because like they were they were mates of ours from back in the day, and we took them on tour. And, like they they were sort of coming out of uh, you know they they sort of started putting stuff online like they they you know because they everyone's got this time off so they did start going through their archives and putting stuff up and that was that was really nice to see and uh and so that's kind of how i found out about it and then yeah just going back and listen like i said listen to tom and people i've known from from those days just like i don't know it's, it's nice man it's like it i think that people who lived through that time they have like a it was such a unique experience that it's it's hard to sort of explain it to other people who didn't who didn't see it in that same uh, in that same way because it was it was really un- unprecedented and exciting, but it was also like you know it, it did sort of like it, it went so. Um, ubiquitous everywhere that it sort of started to lose things and like everyone who everyone who was there and like went through it it was like it was such a it was such a roller coaster you know it was like totally exciting then moments of like you know seeing seeing it just get watered down and just become more and more like just a bit not not what you signed up for it, it was just a, it was a crazy it was just a crazy experience all around it's it's certainly for me at least i mean it's pretty hard living as well you know like it's yeah i was gonna say weird weird way to spend your 20s you know yeah like i mean the best way but we 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 grafted though as well like we did we didn't stop touring a lot of us did we we did yeah and 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 it's funny like you guys i don't know if we recommended it to you or not like um because we used to have a police van that we tarred out. We bought we we bought yeah, we, we bought an ex black Mariah has put out a tar van. It was yeah, we, a we wicked tar you, van. We? Yeah, I don't know if we, I think we tipped you off on where to get it from, didn't we? I think, yeah, yeah. Did you, we tell you, you where to get it from? Yeah, it was like the the auction thing. Yeah, we got it from yeah, an yeah, auction. Yeah, like, yeah, they were the best vans because, like, they were like we paid two thousand pounds for ours, and it's like they've got a roll cage and like got steel reinforced tires, and like they've got. A, you know, a, a 
a cage in the back for keeping your gear in. I mean, it was so <laughs> rad. Bulletproof windows and stuff. <laughs> and and they were cheap, you know. Like it was, it was just yeah. the best. And like, but they were pretty. Good. They were pretty small if you had like a few people in there. But I remember we were touring them, and like if we wanted to sleep because there was nowhere to sleep, we'd sleep underneath the seats, which was like, you know, because it was the only place you could lay down. And it was like, uh, yeah, that that's. I think probably like what four or five years I was just in the back of that, like pretty much eighty percent of the year. It was it was like home, really, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Was, uh, there was even blood. I remember when we got ours. Was, was, yeah, like, you guys had blood in it. There was blood. There was blood all <laughs> I over. Forgot the about that. Where, where like <laughs> where like they'd arrested people or whatever and beaten beaten them up. Or yeah, I totally forgot. Mental. I remember y'all. Yours did have a like that you never knew what you were gonna get, you know, like those because you just getting them like ex service, you know, they've just they've just right. been released to the to the auction houses, but but they were really a good deal and like but yeah, a very confined space and but uh yeah, we still got like yours. four years in that thing. No, we didn't we sold it in uh we sold <laughs> it in two thousand eight, I think. But the the cool thing was we got more for it when we sold it than what we paid for it. So we upgraded to a better van. We 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 got mm. we got like four or five years of touring out of it and it didn't cost us anything because we sold it for mm. more than what we paid for it. So it was like it was amazing. Well, did, and did, like, you sell it, but, did you sell it to like a super fan or something? No, Ross Ross sold it. It was like I, I can't remember I mean he just sold it like, you know, uh online or something, I guess. But then he he's he's really good at that. So he upgraded us to a better van and then like we for our initial two grand that we paid for that first police van he's upgraded us over the years so now we've got like a really awesome like sprinter tar van and it's it's no it hasn't cost us anything really over the years and it's like right. but that's that's we were always like that you know like we we were never even even like you know at at the peak of like that sort of mainstream uh popularity we never we never deviated from it because we knew that we could, like, we were like, we're, we're more than happy doing things this way. Why spend money, like, on a bus or why do this or that? You know, we were always really, mm. uh, we always just did as much as what we could ourselves. And, and it, you know, it did serve as, it, it has served as well over the years. It's the reason why, like, yeah, we've, we've never had to, like, modify how we do things. It's always just been the same. You ask people if they've got like a Liam Gallagher story or a funny story from that time. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> see the thing is, I I don't personally. Um, I, I I remember I know that those guys were around in those days. Like um, I don't personally have much of a story. Like I didn't I didn't uh, I never to be honest. Like with with all due respect, I never really listened to Oasis to be honest. Um, so I didn't really know much about. Well, it's not that I didn't know much. I, you know, the songs, like, everyone knows the songs, but I don't know the albums or anything like that. So, um, you know, I, I was sort of a little bit uh, disconnected from it. But I I remember there was, there's only one story I can think of. It's like, when we did, and Ryan will tell you better about this than what I will, but it was 2013, and we, uh, we were at the NME Awards, and we got the uh, Outstanding Contribution to Music Award, which was, like, a really big deal for us. And... Um, we uh, there was an after party. They have this big after party afterwards. That like, I think it was at the Groucho Club, like one of those really fancy members clubs in London. And they had a big after party, mm. and all the bands went. And um, I, you know, I, it was kind of a, a weird scene there. But uh, Liam was there uh, that night, and he had like he, he always he had like a lot of kids like hanging. Hanger, hanger ons, you know, like um, like mod looking kids, and <laughs> all of a sudden this mod this this mod kid comes up to me. And he's like, "Oh, mate, I'm really, really sorry about Liam. Like, just uh, you know, I'm really sorry, mate. Like, you know, <laughs> total apologies, all of And I was like, "What are you talking about? I had no idea what he's talking about." And he's like, "Oh, he just, you know, he, like, you know, he got into it with your kid or something." And I was like, "I had no idea what he meant." So I went to go find Ryan. And I was like. What's, what's this guy talking about? And I was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I was at the bar and, like, uh, Liam calls me over and I went to go talk to him. And I, 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 I don't know what he was saying, but I, I guess, like, ultimately, Liam had been, like, giving Rye 
a hard time about the fact that we won that award. I guess he was like, you know, probably thinks that we didn't deserve it or something. Um, wow. And I was a little bit annoyed about it because I was like, well, you know, when you think about how successful and how, you know, what an amazing career he's had, I was like, it seemed weird to be punching down at us and be like, you know, begrudging us having having our moment because so was, that was a really nice moment. So I was like, I thought that was pretty mean-spirited. So um, I immediately kind of went into big brother mode and like uh, I wanted to defend Ryan's uh, honor and, and, and the band's honor to a degree. And I was like, right, I'm going to go have a word with Liam about this. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go have a word with him. And I was like, oh, it's okay. I told him to fuck off. Which, uh, which I don't. <laughs> and honestly, like, again, with all due respect, you know, I, I imagine Ry would have done that because Ry would have been like, why the fuck, why the fuck would he, would he say something like that? You know, so, so I was going to go have a, have a word with him. And then like Ry, Ry was like, don't bother me. It's like, think about what a cliche it would be. You know, it's like you're at the Groucho Club and you end up getting in a, getting in a <laughs> argument with Liam Gallagher. There's paparazzi and stuff outside that night as well. So it w- and it would have been cliched. And it's like, you know, I'm sure he was just kind of wasted or something. But it, it, yeah, I was I was annoyed that he decided to like sort of, you know, yeah, begrudge us our our big moment. Like he's, when he's like he's had so much success and he didn't he just didn't need to do it. But um, so that was my only real experience with him. Um, her, well, Ryan's experience with him really more than more than mine. Um, but then, but like Noel, I have a totally different experience with it. He was, he was really nice. Like we played together in Ireland. Um, and I was walking back from the stage. It was a, one of these big outdoor shows. I was walking back from the stage. And as I'm going back to like the backstage, and it's like someone just comes up and puts their arm around me and was like chatting to me. And I was like, I, so he, he was one of the things that like, took me a moment to realize like, oh, it's Noel Gallagher. He just came up, he just put his arm around me and was telling me like, good show. And like, you know, really, um, really friendly like and familiar so i had a i had a re- really good experience with him but um yeah my only my only one encounter with liam was like you know i was ready to go have a go have a word with him about <laughs> about something which which to be honest would it's just you know that's not it's definitely not my vibe you know so um i'm sure that that's kind of pretty par for the course with with liam but uh he definitely I, I don't know he just seemed like he just seemed like a what what's the point? You know, what I mean, it's like I like to think if I was in his position, I'd be I'd be cool to like you know younger bands on the hook. You know, what I mean, because it's like yeah, you respect everyone. I mean, you know, like I said, I never really listened to Oasis, but I, I respect them because they've you know they've done really well and they're obviously like you know people love them. So it's like it's a bit it's a bit of a burn when you're just getting put down by the lead singer. Like when you're having your we were having our you know that was our big night you know what i mean it was a nice nice yeah. moment so a bit of a buzz kill but um but yeah i went into big brother mode i was like right i'll go have a word with him it's <laughs> like really do you really want to be getting in a fight with liam gallagher at the groucho club in solo <laughs> that's <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like a very sun newspaper thing to be doing so yeah <laughs> is there any funny stories like you remember tom from back in the day with playing with the cribs or anything oh uh, Mem- my memory is kind of shit for those things, uh, but th- th- there was a lot. There was a lot of funny nights that we had. In my mind, like the thing I remember the most was like in the police van. We'd either be driving over to Hull or driving down to London or something like that. And then it was always kind of it, for some reason it was always summer. Or we'd be in Middlesbrough or somewhere like that. Yeah, we'd always we be summer, in Middlesbrough, didn't we? Yeah, and. I remember, like, you, then you'd hang out, you'd do the gig hangout, and then late at night, head back to Wakefield and, like, ship over at uh, Intrepid uh, tour manager or uh, guitar tech would would just drive back at any any hour of the day. And I remember, like, yeah. some of the coming, coming back up the M1, listening to, like, listening to, uh, like, the best of the kinks or, or like, that Mardu's demo cd that everyone had and it was like oh yeah the, sun, the sun would just be coming up someone would just be coming up it would be really late and i was, that that them are memories like summer days like yeah playing just there's anywhere a, and then driving back overnight with kid yeah there was, there was a couple of times actually i remember one of those moments like, like you said like ali josh's sister she used to tour managers remember and yeah. um 
she would drive back. She'd be like, right, it's fine. I, I, I'll, I'll drive back. I remember a couple of times, like, she'd definitely fall asleep at the wheel and you, you just, like... <laughs> I, I used to sit in the front quite often, like, after a show because I'd just be, like, done with, like, getting wasted or whatever. And, and I'd fall asleep in the front. I remember waking up and, like, Ali was just, like, veering off to the side. And, like, <laughs> I would just, I'd, I'd woke up and, like, she'd fucking fall asleep. I was like, what the... And, like... She just like pulled it back together, but like. Well, we were lucky because Shippo was like, like Shippo would just get a crate of Red Bull like all the time and just like just drink Red Bull constantly, and so he was pretty responsible. He wasn't really much of a drinker back then either, so he would just like he he never drink and he just he'd just drink Red Bull. So he was like, and, but he was he was up yeah. for anything. He, he, we'd 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 set off driving back at like four a.m. sometimes and. I just yeah. remember that, like the the sun coming up on the motorway, and you just like yeah. you'd feel kind of like weird, and you'd had all these like you'd had this crazy, you know, experience of like playing a gig in middle of nowhere or whatever, and all these people coming out, and uh, yeah, we'd usually be listening to like the Kinks or something. It's just like it's dead romantic, really. It was just I remember mm. just thinking like. This is what it's supposed to be, you know what I mean? That's that. Yeah, it was. The thought in my mind was like, we're, we're doing it without anyone's permission. This is amazing. Like, this is, this is like, you know, it was before it became, it's before, every, it's before it became everybody else's. It's when it was still, you know, just like only the people in the know were sort of seeing it, you know what I mean? That was the most exciting time before, mm. before it really exploded. Yeah, it was definitely. It just, I just remember thinking, it's like, this is what it was. Yeah, it was like this is what it's supposed to be in a lot of ways. It's just organic, kids mm-hmm. connecting, people finding each other. You know, it's just, yeah. It's nice to be a part of that. It's nice to, especially as a band, like it's nice to be the soundtrack to that. It's like, mm. you know, it's, it's special, really. <laughs> Do you have any underrated bands from back in the day, Gary? Um. Well, early early days, like the Sleepy Jacks, and I thought were really good. Like they were from Australia. They were the first band to take us on tour. We met them in two thousand two, and they uh, they were really getting a lot of attention at the time. And uh, yeah, they, they just we were a local support, and they really liked and took us on tour. And that was that was awesome for us. Like and the, the really great band, kind of like a bit psychedelic and a little bit like sound like a little bit like George Harrison or Beatles. It's just just wicked. Like they were like our favorite band of the time and they were on the radio and stuff and it just was so exciting to be put in that position. But then like I, I also really like that Mardu's C D like I was yeah. saying to saying to you that they, was they were they were really good. They signed to Pop Tones, didn't they? And it looked like they were gonna mm. get out there. Um but yeah I thought that yeah, and- that demo of theirs was wicked. And um, I liked the Chalets who toured with us a lot. They were a, a, a good pop band from Ireland, kind of a bit like B-52s or something, like male and female vocals and like really good like new wave pop songs. There were some cool bands. Looking back at those early days, is there anything you would have done differently? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, as far as like how we operated, probably not. But as far as like my own personal thing, I, I would have I would have tried to enjoy it a little more. I mean, I, I did it, I did enjoy it, but we were, we were so self critical, like we we would we were like, and we were really angry a lot of the time as well. Like um, you know, like like I said, like by the time it got oversubscribed, we were, we were really bitter about it. And it's only since we came through that and managed to you know, you know, maintain our position. Like we were always like, oh, we, we just want the ship to sink. We just want this to be over. Like we want to get back to you know, time before uh, before this became oversubscribed, and we were we were always saying that we were waiting for the ship to sink. But to be honest, because we were just scared of being associated with with that, we didn't want to be associated with it. But to be honest, I wish I'd have enjoyed it a little bit more because it was pretty surreal and crazy. But we were, you know, we were pretty we were pretty pessimistic about the whole thing. And like, but now looking back, like you know. Like after having, you know, been been uh, maintaining things for this long, I'm like, oh, that, that was probably pretty fun. I, I probably would have dealt with that differently now. 
yeah. there's no reason for me to be so um, sort of yeah, we're just pretty anti everything. We should have just had a bit more fun, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, judging from these songs, you're quite aware of that early on, like with hair scenes yeah. and stuff. You seem, yeah, you're quite aware of that happening, kind of thing. Yeah, we're just because we were small town kids, you know, and we were just reactionary. We were just reacting to. Uh, we thought it was like a bit facile, and uh, and we it wasn't. We didn't believe in a lot of it, so we were, but you know, like I said. That's that's how I felt at the time. I was angry. Like I, I, now, I look back. I'm like, you know, it's, it's with the benefit of hindsight and with like benefit of experience. But I'm like, you know, I should have just enjoyed it a little bit more. But but at the same time, would we have been who we were if I'd have done that? I don't know. But I, I probably wouldn't give myself such a hard time. You know, we we, had, we definitely had a lot of fun anyway. But like, I just wish that it, the only thing that I would wish is that I'd have maybe being a bit less of a self-saboteur and just kind of let things happen, you know. Uh, would you say there's been a particular high point for you guys or not really? What what I told you about the what I told you about the demo when we when we when we got signed in two thousand two, I don't think anything ever that that was that was like that was the only thing I'd ever I'd never imagined getting to that point. So that was probably the peak, even though that was just the start of it all. It was just like it was just so unexpected. Like that was just such an amazing moment. That, but 2008 as a year was a pretty great year all around. Like, you know, we, we, we were doing some like, I remember the way that 2008 started was we got, we were in the, we, we'd started working with Johnny, which, you know, um, was, was unexpected. We'd started working with him and then we, we got all these NME award nominations. Then we went on tour on a big US tour which was our own headline tour and it was, and it went really well. And like, then we came back and did the headline, the NME awards tour. It's like, everything was just, it was really busy. It was 2008 and everything was really good and easy. You know, that was like the, that was kind of like technically the peak, whether it was like my favorite point, I don't know, but technically that was like a, a really good year. And I, that was the year that we headlined the second stage at, Reading and Leeds and like to, to be going on at like 11 o'clock at night or whatever time it is you know and you can just and it's dark and you've been there all day and you can hear the hear everyone chanting and stuff that was that was insane you know it was like it it's not headlining the main stage but it feels kind of the same because it's like still late at night and you know you've been there all day and like everyone's everyone's waiting for you it's just like I can imagine what it feels like for those fans who do headline the main stage because that was a that was a wild experience, you know. It was like, yeah, that that was a good year all around. You kind of enjoy playing the second stages rather than the main stage, though. I, to be honest, I'm not bothered either way. Um, okay. Do, like, I, I like the main stage as well. It's a bit more out of control. It's the main stage. It's like, it's open and windy and and kind of kind of nuts. But like, it's the, the fun, you know. Like, it's it, it's it's more, much more intimidating the tents just feel like a big gig so that you know that is that is pretty awesome but um i, I i'm easy either way you know like, to, to be honest like I, right, if you ask rye rye will just say whatever's the most uh surreal is kind of what he's into you know and, and the main stage they're, they're like a different challenge you know what i mean it's like they're not necessarily conducive for having a, a good punk rock gig but when you do have a good punk rock gig on in those situations nothing compares to them because it's like you know you see like tens of thousands of people have a, have a mosh pit outside in the in the sun that's just like it's just it's 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 so unusual it's amazing you know mm. yeah i remember watching you i think it's 2006 at leeds on the main stage and it was bright sunshine yeah. <laughs> that was, was the like first this. time we and that was the first time we'd ever done anything like that and we were such fish out of water and it was it was cool. It, it, we were lucky because it was our first time doing that, and we had no experience. And it was like it went really well. Like we, I remember the feeling of coming off was like the first thing was relief, and the second feeling was just like, man, that was cool, you know? Because it's like, yeah, you can't take that experience off people, you know? It's like a, a, I always wanted to do it when I was a kid. I, I used to go down on the coach to Reading Festival, so it always seemed massive to me. Like it was my first festival, and it always seemed just un unbelievably massive thing and i always wanted to do the main stage but never expected that i would so when i'd done it i was like 
it, so before the gig, I was really intimidated because I'd built it up over years. But then after the gig, it just was, it felt amazing. You know, it's like, oh, no one can ever take that away from me. I've done that now. I was just talking to Tom from Forward Russia last week when I asked him about his high points. And he was like saying, another oh, thing about being in a band is you're always looking to the next level. And yeah. like you said, maybe you should have enjoyed it more back, back when it's happening, maybe. Yeah, because it's incremental. Like for us, it was incremental. It won't, it, it's like it, we didn't get big overnight. Like, so we never, you never have that moment of like jaw dropping, like, whoa, this is surreal. It was always incremental. The first high point was like we got signed, we couldn't believe it. And then, you know, we put our record out and then, then we started doing those, you know, gigs, like those provincial gigs. And that was amazing, but like it's still very local feeling. And if, Second record comes out, you start getting songs in the charts. You're like, whoa, this is cool. But it's still like, it's only just one step up the ladder. So by the time we were like doing main stages or like having top 10 records, we'd, we'd already, we'd, we'd, we'd climbed every rung of the ladder. So it was so incremental and slow that you never had that surreal moment. Whereas like, if you go from being on sign to being top 10, that's like such a, you know, that's like going from rung number one to rung, to the top rung. It's like, that's surreal. Whereas we, we, we basically went, step by step we, we hit every single you know uh we hit every single like step we we, we didn't we didn't uh sort of leapfrog anything it was like it was a really gradual process so um you know we never we never had that surreal kind of like we were never we were never overawed by it because we we sort of like we were so steady with our progress and i think that's why we managed to stay at the position that we got to because we had that experience, you know, like we, we knew how to deal with it all. I mean, that's probably it, Gary. I really appreciate your time there. That's probably get two right. episodes out of that. So yeah. <laughs> well, thanks man. It's like, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, I ain't got anything else to do. So it's nice to just, <laughs> you know, it's nice to talk about this stuff. It's like now genuinely feels like a different era for a long time. It didn't, but now it just does feel like a different era to me. And it's like, you know, it's it's cool to like sort of view it in that way. Yeah, I mean, when you say 20 years, it sounds mad, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>